Hi, I'm Phil Hill, and welcome back to eLiterate TV. Today, we're with Eva Shuring from the Research and Planning Group of California Community Colleges, and with Pat James from uh, Mount San Jacinto College in California as well. So welcome, and thank you for coming to talk about your uh, research project. So Pat, could you tell me a little bit about the course in your project? Yes, um, we, we had a perfect storm in California where we had a problem with economics, mm -hmm. tanking, and we were trying to increase transfer degrees to the, from our community colleges to our four-year institutions. And in the process, we were adding courses on that end and reducing courses on the developmental end. So we had students who couldn't, um, who couldn't assess into college level English sure. and no place for them to go. Mm -hmm. So the MOOC seemed to be a really good answer for that, mm -hmm. and we went about creating an effective writing MOOC that's based on uh, parts of speech and language usage. So it is the bottom of our developmental courses, and that's what we created. Yeah, and it is, that's different than a lot of the approaches we've seen so far about it's writing. Very, I think it's very different, because when you go into the MOOC providers right now and you look at those courses, what you end up seeing is courses that are pretty high level yep. for folks who can read and can write and um, understand at an educational perspective. They really know what they're doing. Sure. And this course was for people who maybe had never taken an online course before sure. or who were at the very lowest levels of their education. And we were hoping that what would happen is they would take the course and then be able to assess into college level uh, writing. Mm -hmm and take college classes. So it's for people who are between, in between. Sure. You know, high school maybe in college or, or out of high school and wanting to go into college. Great, thank you. So Eva, tell me, what have you guys learned so far? Well, first I'd just like to um, add to what Pat was saying about the importance of looking at MOOCs to, as a possible way that we can help students who are, um, who assess into basic skills. And I want to talk about the number of students who are in that predicament. Sure. In the community colleges nationwide, about 60% of students who enter the community colleges in the US need basic skills instruction. And what that basically means is that they are not ready for college level instruction. They have to take basic skills courses in math or in English or both. Sure. And what happens is not just that they get into these courses, but that most of them actually never come out of them. Mm -hmm. In California, um, we have about 70% of the students um, enter, who enter community colleges need uh, remedial training, in e remedial instruction in math or English. Mm -hmm. And also if you look at who, are in, who we're talking about, it's the large majority are underrepresented minority students. Sure. So we're really looking at our MOOC as a possible vehicle for serving a very different population, as Pat was saying, as what we traditionally think about with the MOOC serving students from MIT and students all over the country and beyond in around the world who take classes in electrical engineering. I'm not saying there's no place for that, but I'm saying we're, our MOOC is really looking at a very different population. Yeah, very specific. Yeah. Sure. And, and so some of the findings that you've seen so far? I can talk with confidence about uh, the findings from our survey work at this point. What we're doing is we're getting at, we have some research questions that involve looking at different types of um, use of the MOOC, different ways that students engage with the MOOC. We're trying to figure out how we can classify students into different groups of users uh, that would describe how engaged they are, how much of the work they do. And we're also really interested in looking at what kind of early predictors we can look at, such as um, patterns of engagement, um, how students are using the MOOC platform early on, demographic characteristics, Different, times of, different kinds of variables we can look at to determine uh, whether students are at a high risk of not success, of being successful in the course sure. for the purpose of then intervening. Okay. So those are the research questions. We also want to, of course, find out whether students like the class and where they think the class is working for them and where improvements could be made. So that's another purpose of the research. So going back to you asking what, what have we found so far? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so we know a little bit more about who the users are of this MOOC, mm -hmm. um, that is through the survey. So surveys, of course, um, only tell us what the people who respond to, respond to the surveys um, sure. will reveal. And we know that the, from some research that we did that uh, the survey population is not, they're they more engaged than the average sure. user. But 
We do know that we have um, participants from 166 countries. Mm -hmm. About uh, one third of them are from the U.S. We know that about 40% of them are white, about 25% Asian, and about 12% are Latinos, and about 6% African American. Sure. We also are really interested in finding out what motivated students to take the course, because even though it was developed primarily for basic skill students, when you put a MOOC out there and you don't know who's Who going to be signing up. Yeah. And Pat has been working really hard to get community college students to sign up for the course. Well, we have 300. We have 300. The, we had 300 in the last sure. session. We've done two sessions. And it, it's really kind of interesting because both sessions had similar numbers. Yeah. Which was, you know, I, was, I went back and looked to see, were they the same students? <laughs> you know, they weren't. But we had over 45,000 in each session. Mm -hmm which, you know, was a, a shocker. We're watching yeah. the numbers go and we're watching the Google map just fill up really fast and kind of, oh my gosh, you yeah. know, and um, it was pretty exciting. And out of that, uh, each session we had about 2,700 complete. Yep. But we had lots and lots of anecdotal information from people saying that they, you know, they got so much out of the class for their jobs, sure. for their life, just being able to write because that's what they wanted to do for a variety of reasons, sure. and not necessarily students. As a matter of fact, one of the things we found out was that most of them are not students of any kind, nor are they planning to be. Seventy percent of them are not students. Really? Yeah. yeah. But they still the t the materials of interest to them. Uh, right. Very much so, and a lot of students with English as a second language obviously, and, and they're interested in creating sentences that make sense. And then there were people who said, it's been a long time for me since I looked at the structure of writing and, you know, and I'm not sure that I'm writing correctly or that I ever really learned that. Sure. So the course itself, the instructors that were involved in putting the course together were thoughtful about directing what they were teaching to an audience that is not made up of fifth graders trying to learn how to write, yeah. but made up of adults who need to be addressed as adults with respect and honored for what they are capable of learning. Sure. And I think that was part of the success. We felt it was very successful. Sure. And well, this is a, it's a fascinating yeah. subject, particularly looking at this demographic and this uh, targeted audience for the MOOC and for the writing. Tell me a little bit, if you just broaden that out, um, given your experience, what do you hope to see, what do you hope that we'll know about MOOCs more broadly a year from now than what we actually know today? Well, from our perspective for this particular population, uh, we, we would like to know more about how we can, how the students that we are mostly, well, that we're particularly concerned about, the community college students, are doing in the MOOCs. Yeah. Um, so that, because what we would really like to see is how we can take the MOOCs and use them to provide students in the California Community College system and beyond with more opportunities to be successful in basic skills courses. Gotcha. So what the instructors need and what we need in order to be able to persuade more institutions to use MOOCs and to use this MOOC um, is some data that shows that yes, um, community college students who take this course um, and who will go back and take the assessments uh, um, test again score better, or a large percentage of them score better. So that if we could show that, then we could persuade more, organ more institutions around the state to consider offering this to the students and to really promote it. Because it's offering it and then really promoting it. Gotcha. And, it's, and it's an important piece because we don't have the funds to reach. We turned away 450,000 students. Sure. And there's no funds to reach all of these students. So this is a nice way to do that, but there's also, I think it's a myth, and uh, or maybe it's not a myth. Maybe it's a reality that we have to work on, and that is how do we, how do we address the needs of basic students, of sure. the ones who have trouble in a regular class, who have trouble in traditional online classes and don't do well there. How do we meet the needs of those students? And I think I'd like to learn more about that. Great. Um, in general, the other thing is I want to live in a world where people are smart, where they can write, and where they can think, and where they can ask questions um, themselves and not take anybody else's word for anything. And having that global perspective, we watched our students in the discussion forums talk about all kinds of things, some of them never having spoken to people from outside the United States ever before. Sure. And so there's a lot, I think, that we can learn. 
Great. You know, not just about developmental ed or about MOOCs, but about our society and our world. Sure. Well, it's been a great conversation about the developmental writing MOOC and the research you're doing. So I want to thank Pat James and Eva Shuring for being here today. Thank you. You're welcome.